Hi, welcome to Tea Talks. I'm Herb the Third, the Psychosis, and this is Matt. I'm the Neurosis. And today we're going to be drinking tea and talking things about stuff. Mm hmm. We got a whole list of stuff. And it's, it's a lot like what we do not in front of the camera. So we just, you know, we're starting to just film what we do mm -hmm. while drinking tea. But now with you. Eh. So today's tea we're going to drink today is called Last Laugh. It's from Yunnan Sourcing. A guy named Scott Wilson has made this tea. And I've been, over the last year, been buying his teas. And they're quite good. This is a blend of six different teas, which is then um, fermented into a ripe pu'er. And uh, we'll see if we like it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've had this one yet, Matt, so I don't it's going that. to be an adventure. But I love the laughing pig. Yeah. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure customers of Scott are able to paint or draw designs for the following year tea cakes and then he picks winners and prints them on his cakes. Oh, that's awesome. So, that's I don't know cool. who did it, but it probably says on the back somewhere that's who cool. is the artist of that particular thing. It looks awesome. Looks great. Yeah, I know. Last laugh. Last laugh. And it's a laughing pig. And it was for Year of the Pigs. This cake came out in 2019. was pressed then, for what I've read. And uh, the tea material is from 2016 to 18. Nice. Yeah, it should be good. Mm, now so. we do one rinse, as you know. Beauty. Rinsing is good, especially with show pu'er, which is a fermented tea. It kind of, you know, it washes off the funky taste it might have, especially if the tea is, you know, two to four years old since it's been fermented and processed. Mm -hmm. And anything after that normally loses the funky taste and starts becoming really nice. Nice. I find this one really nice anyways. How long did you steep that for? That that was just like a, maybe a four or five second rinse. Oh, this is the rinse, right? Yeah. Okay. The next one I'm probably going to do the, the first pour for you and me to sample. Mm -hmm. Supple sample of tea. Nice. It'll be probably about 15 seconds. And okay. then depending on how strong it tastes, I'll probably drop it down to 10, 8, maybe 6, and then 10, 15, 20. So kind of like down and then... Oh, okay. Depending on the pungency of the tea. These are the secret things that I do that you don't hear about. Mm -hmm. I'm giving my uh, tea pet, Double Dragon, some tea. Nice. He's a sweet little guy. I've had him for a while. He, he loves tea. That's cool. So I'm excited too mm -hmm. because I finally bit the bullet and got myself something similar, quite similar to this. Uh -huh. um, but I am still in the Padawan stage mm -hmm. of tea brewing, mm -hmm. uh, Gung Fu Cha style, yeah. and it's interesting because I made a few rookie mistakes yeah. that I, that maybe, you know, you could go into and how you, how, how to do it right, yeah. basically, right? Well, the, the word on the street is making mistakes over here in the western part of the world, buying tea items and utensils and tea itself is, you know, you could accidentally pay tuition. Like right, right. buying cheap stuff that um, which I did might not be healthy to use or buy tea that just doesn't taste good. And you know, if, if it has Mandarin writing on a tea cake or a bag of tea that you got in Chinatown, let's say, like you're not going to know if you don't speak it and you've never tried it. Then you bring it home, you try it, and it's gross. Yeah. That would be considered tuition. Right. I've paid some tuition. You're learning. Oh, learning. I think everyone does. Um... Yeah, so you bought yourself uh, a clay pot and mm -hmm. a couple cups and a guy wand, and it just probably wasn't yishin clay. And it's probably right. factory built, and it's functional. Yeah. Just it might not taste the best and um, might break easier. There, there, there could be some things, but it's it, it's a good, you know, anything works. If you can make tea with it, it's a good, good training wheels. Totally, totally. It, it's not a, a long, wet table like you have here. It's just tiny little clay dealy mm -hmm. um that you can you know you can pour and get wet and things like that mm -hmm. um the pot itself i didn't look at it because I, I was just so desperate to get one i kind of rushed into it um this actual pot the cap doesn't go on properly it's cheap it was about a hundred bucks for the whole set mm -hmm. and um 
yeah, you know, it's, it's just kind of like poorly made. Right? Yeah, and you know, I think that they gouged you a bit with the hundred bucks too. Like this is a hundred dollar pot, and it's a good pot for things that aren't good. It should have been like thirty bucks, but you just don't know what you're gonna buy. Yeah, you should have been with me. I should have, yeah, but I was I was tea rushing. Tea rushing and impulse and tea buying. In, impulse teaing, mm -hmm. and it's not even about that. Cheers. It is about sipping and revering good fine taste. Yeah. I mean, I really should. So what happened was I went mm. to your favorite tea store. Yes. Downtown. Well, my favorite Victoria tea store. Favorite Victoria tea store. And I got like 40 bucks worth of 15-year-old pu'er. Show pu'er. Show pu'er. Loose. Loose. Yeah. So it's, it's, it wasn't the cakes. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I get this, I'm like, I got to try this. Yeah. So I went, I went to Chinatown. I was calling you. I bet mm -hmm. you're trying to direct me in the right I, way. I gave, I gave him you gave me directions the, directly right. to good utensils. But, you know, and then I go to, I go to the store, mm -hmm. and they're not even a tea store, they were a herbalist. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of annoyed I was there. You mm -hmm. know, this white guy comes in and he's like, oh, I do tea, like, whoa, right? So, mm -hmm. they, they didn't really want to have me there. So, I was like, well, screw you guys if you're not going to help me. I'm going to go somewhere else. So I went next door to like the Chinese corner store. Mm -hmm. And that's this is where I found this $100 set. And it looks similar enough to what you have. That it tricked you. It tricked me. It and I, I'm like, okay, good. And I, yeah. I really just wanted to try this pu'er, right? So You know, you use it until you get better utensils and you can turn it into like like plant pots or something. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Throw and, mushrooms in it. And that tea you got, like um, that tea, that 15 year old tea, I think was 10 years old when I first tried it. Maybe older. I think it's old. Nah. I think it's like 18 years old now, but it's labeled 15. Because mm. I remember when I first tried it, it was the first time I tried ripe puer. And right. it's good. But I think it's right at the level of where ripe puer gets great, but it's good. It's qualifying. It's not cheap. Right. It doesn't have really funky taste like I was talking about earlier. It's a good tea. It was good, yeah. So it's and it and it feels good. It yeah. It was woody, kind of similar to this, uh -huh. actually. Yes. Um, not it doesn't have the bite I find that this has. Yes, and I think that's that's just going to give this longevity in the steepings. Right. First couple will be really bitey, and then it'll start calming down. We'll get a lot of steeps out of it, hopefully. Totally. Um, that's that is the one issue with beautiful um, Victoria, British Columbia, is we don't have a surplus of quality tea and teawares like let's say the Chinese tea shop in Vancouver or like the website UnitedSourcing.com. Like both of those are going to get authentic, mm -hmm. well-made, well-processed tea and teawares that can really help someone propagate this culture in their own life. Right. And it's, I mean, Victoria has Canada's oldest Chinatown. Sure does. Which is interesting, but just, the, I, I guess it's just the population in here, right? And, and, so. You know, and, and it depends on who, where in China the people moved from and how they right. were serving tea. Um, Gong Fu Cha, I think, is mainly, well, st I think it started in southern China and then kind of on the, the coast, up the coast. But, you know, who, who knows? Who knows? how they drink tea in Chinatown here. I do know in Chinatown, Vancouver, there's a bunch of people drinking it this style. So right. I don't fully know, but I do know I go to Vancouver and I, I I talk to a man named Daniel at the Chinese tea shop. He's taught me a lot of stuff and I YouTube a lot and I read a lot and mm -hmm. I've been sipping a lot of tea and getting a lot of totally. information. Another mistake I made too uh, was steeping too long because on the instructions of this loose leaf tea <laughs> it said two to three minutes per mm -hmm. steep mm -hmm. and I ended up doing that the first pot is great you know the mm -hmm. first the first cup but then after that it's just pure water yeah because right? I, I guess I, I took it all out at yeah. once. well that's a western style of brewing instructions because there's no one here that brews it like this really right. um, so that the three minute steep is three to five minutes steep is designed for bigger teapots with those big screens in it not these little tiny ones right oh, okay and the thing with these gotcha. little tiny ones is technically we're putting in the same amount of tea if not more so it's yeah. kind of if you want to it's like tea espresso kind of it's a oh, bad yeah, way yeah. to describe it but <laughs> it is a good way to describe it that's interesting though yeah speaking of descriptions how does this taste do you, do you picking up anything it's this is amazing actually i, I really like this mm. it's uh 
it's got that pu'er like woodiness. Yeah. Um, but it's it's almost creamy. Very creamy you know? and velvety, right? Velvety, like mm. like almost vanilla. Yeah. It, it approaches like vanilla. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm also tasting like uh, that's good. Like cigar shop. Yeah. Like a little bit of cigar shop, and I think there's yeah. a little bit of red currenty berry fruits in here hidden. Oh, that's cool. And you put 100 grams in that? 10 grams. 10 grams. 10 grams. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. 10 that's grams, cool. and I think this bad boy is about 130 mils. Oh, okay. When normal teapots are normally like a liter. Right, yeah. Right? So definitely a difference, but this is how tea that is, really good. is drunk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second, the second uh, steep was... And I think the reason the second steep was better too is the fermentation process. Like I said, it got pressed in 2019, but some of the leaves were fermented in 2016 to 18, and it still has a lingering funkiness to it. Okay. But the funkiness will go. And then you'll never know, like all steeps will be good, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. This is awesome. So I think we did pretty good on describing the tea for once. Um, yeah, that's what yeah. we're going to do in the tea talks. We're going to talk yeah. about tea, maybe advertise some tea. And then we're going to talk about gibberish because yeah. that is actually what tea seems to propagate in my life mm -hmm. with my friends. It's People a down rabbit holes. Yeah, it's a break from psychosis and neurosis. Mm. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can talk about my neurosis all day. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't seem to fix anything, but uh, I do like blabbing about it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I go on and on. Um, for example, mm. one of our first topics. Let's hear. Um, I went out on a date with a girl. Uh-huh. And I got really hungry. Yeah. Beast mode. Beast mode. And then there you're was not a small guy. No, I got to eat. Yeah, you're hungry. I got to eat. Hungry. And I'm starting to work out a it's bit that more, Scottish too. blood. Yeah, we got... I, yeah, we I got fuel. We got to fuel, fuel the fire. Yeah. Um, so I got really hungry. Fuel and the I, fire. <laughs> so uh, I was gonna be like freedom from freedom. Hunger. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I honestly sometimes you know you go on these dates they want like the the girl wants to take off after an hour. Like, yeah. What, I I don't know what they're thinking you know. I mean but she she was chilling with me and I'm like I gotta eat something. Mm -hmm. There's this burger place I really like. What burger? Do you want to go to uh, Big Wheel? Big Wheel. We were right down near Big Wheel Burger. Cook Street. Cook Street. Cook Street. And um, yeah, you know, I'm like, do you want anything? She's like, no, I'm I'm good. So um, yeah, I was gonna buy her. I, you know, buy her a burger. You're classy man. Yeah. You're I, gonna buy a hey, girl off you know, Tinder some you're, some <laughs> yeah a burger. Yeah. I mean, I can't afford it, but you know, mm -hmm. it's brownie points. Yeah. Um, but you know, I don't, and then uh, I was eating in front of her. Okay. Right, and I, I just felt really weird about that. Right, I mean you're. And I was got. She eating? No, she wasn't. No, eating. she wasn't eating. So I'm eating, con converse <laughs> in front of her, right? And then I talk. I talked to Bailey, and she's like, "Not so yeah. good." No, Not I so haven't. Good. I haven't really paid attention to you eating, right? Because when Matt's eating, I'm eating. Yeah. And that's more of a, a solo focus. Mm -hmm. But I eat very fast. I I, I have seen that, but yeah. I'm gonna say I don't think. I'm not a slob. I don't think you're an attractive eater either. I'm not an attractive eater. I'm I'm scary. Right. Like if a finger is in my way, I'll take that with me. Right? Like, yeah. Hum. Right. It's it's yeah no it's crazy. I mean I, I chew with my mouth closed, but I got this I got this fiery beard of death. Right. And, well, and that so was a date. Right? It was a date too, right? Like what's her problem? You know, like she's, she she wasn't hungry. The, I, I mean I don't messing know. Messing with the dynamics of a date. It was all right. Makes it a little awkward, right? You know, like you kind of want you kind of want the first impression on both sides to be chill. Yeah. Right? Like get, I, get, well, get a salad. A get salad. Get a salad, lady. If you don't like salad, fries. Like, you know, fries. split split a small fry. Like like I would feel really awkward too. I would do it. Was it. Fine. I would do it. I probably just shouldn't have. I probably just should have waited till she left. But my big mm -hmm. fear was because I got this this fire hitter right yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Is getting like some gooping, mm. right? And she doesn't know me well enough to be mm. like, "You mm. kind of look disgusting right now." So mm. that was what I was. And then I'm like, mm. and then later I was at your house. We were eating waffles. Um, that was mm. a good day of eating. Mm. I, we fucking killed it. Yeah, it was good. Um, and then I had syrup in my beard, and you were looking after one of Isaiah's little friends. Yeah, and Carmella. Carmella and, and friggin', she's like, "You have syrup in your beard," and then I was like. 
I'm like, a little kid's going to tell you. She's a milky little she's, vampire. She's, sure. She likes to, but, uh, you know. Yeah, so, so I, that's that's the risk. Yeah. Especially, and you got a beard hit or, you know. You know, you know, I've definitely noticed since I've grown the stash that everything gets in it. Peanut butter and jelly is terrible. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't wash it out good, then you got that little, like, nutty smell uh, in your mustache yeah. and stuff. And, like, yeah, things get caught in the bottom, too. Mm -hmm. It's... For people who don't know and don't have mustache, it's a pain in the ass, actually. Like, I've yeah. gotten to the point where I've, like, I will, like, froth up and use some serious soap just to, like, mm -hmm. wash it because I know it's catching everything. It's catching. Right? And, you know, I, I don't want to. It's I filtering. will, but I don't want to. I wish this was a little easier, you mm -hmm. know? But the price to be a legend. It, it's ah. true. That's true. Uh, do, you, do you trim the bottom of your mustache so it gets out of your lip? At times I did, but right now I'm just letting it grow. Oh, you're trying to get that wild. I want to cool start shape. waxing it maybe and put Ooh, like double yeah. hooks. Double hooks. Double hooks. <laughs> double hooks. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't want to steep this. It's what, four? Four, it's still looking like. That's thick. That's like black gold. Texas that tea. Is. Texas tea. Texas tea. You know. I love it. This is delicious. And and you know, this is what I do with the people in my house constantly. Oh yeah. This is what I do. No, that's great. I normally have tea by myself in the morning and then if I am lucky or if the universe has um, been nice to me that day, I'll be able to have tea with friends. Mm -hmm. Like I love having tea solo like once a day. That's perfect. It's a good like me time. But I like to have tea at least twice a day. Mm -hmm. And I like the other one normally to be with people. It, it's fun. It's right? good. It's it's something to do, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not just staring at it. And that's another good thing I was talking about for a date. You know, mm -hmm. when you're on a first date with somebody, you don't want to be staring at them mm -hmm. the whole time. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, if even mm -hmm. this is a little risky. I mean, if I was just facing yeah, you... Yeah, it's a little intense. It's a, it's a little too intense, so you gotta you got to walk beside them. I don't know if that's it common It also depends on your own... Um, What's that D and D? The charisma and the own. Oh, charisma. Little... That's true. Yeah. It depends on your own little thing. Some some guys are close talkers. Some guys are ear yeah. whispers. I'm not. Ear whispers. Matt's not. No, no. But in normal circumstances, yeah, you don't want to be too in the face. With I'd probably people. deafen them if I tried to ear whisper. You deafen me, and I'm I only do, a I meter do. or so away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a cycle, right? Because the more I deafen you, mm -hmm. the louder I have. To yell. Yeah. Break? Now we got like two minutes. We got, a minute? We got okay. about a minute. Um, cool. Can we crush one in a minute? Uh, I don't know. Well, uh, I guess astrology. Now we'll wait on that. Let's wait on it. Why don't we put this okay. in the video so people can get annoyed at our, our bum fumbling? Bum. This is a 20 minute video card, everyone. This is what happens. A, yeah, you know, on that DSLR, you can only. DSLR. You can only record for 20 minutes. Only. It's okay, though. Yeah. We got more for you. There's yeah. more tea. We talked a lot about tea. We did. I think that was a good. I think that I like is, it. that's where I want the tea to be. You like tea. Well, yeah. Tea has to at least be present. So, do you call them tea experts or tea masters? I think back in the day people call them tea. I think there's a whole bunch of names for it, but there is a word called tea master normally reserved for people that have spent a long time tea making tea. I know there's pottery masters too, and I think I read somewhere it's like 30 years or something. 30 years making teapots to be master. I don't know. This could all just be some propaganda I read mm. people to make their little Google posts but i read them speaking of legends yeah i um i know a man named john and i look up to john john's a great man and he learned some breathing techniques he went on a retreat to learn some spiritual breathing and he learned how to be a facilitator of this breathing oh. and he invited me to try out this breathing um, I would say I'm a biohacker. I like cold showers. I've done the Wim Hof sort of stuff. I, I do some extreme fasting from time to time. So I'm very interested in that. I'm also into spiritual open-mindedness. Mm -hmm. Quick check if you're into spiritual open-mindedness or not. 
spiritual open-mindedness to me is like you know visiting other cultures and seeing what that is so if that's mm -hmm. bugging you then you might not be spiritually open-minded anyways <laughs> oh yeah anyways um so this breathing um was facilitated at his house he had some music playing and um, he guided me through it. It was a really consistent re rhythm of deep breathing. And it went on for a while. And um, wow. I'm not going to be able to really word things without kind of screwing it up. But I'll, I'll just say that if you could turn oxygen into DMT, I think that's really close to what I did. Um, you know, my whole body felt really weird. It felt like if anyone has ever been able to throw a fireball, it was me at that moment. Like, very tingly. My, like, I felt really high, let's say. Okay. And then, and then, and it's a lot like Wim, Wim Hof will get you tingly too. But this was like extended periods of that. So I was, I was right in it. And uh, at one point I started being like, you know... I don't really care what John's saying right now. I, I can't really breathe anymore. I'm done breathing. Okay. And I think at that point I passed out, kind of like fell asleep. Oh. Right? And um, at that point launched. And then I was... Um, so it felt like, a, like DMT. I don't know if it felt like anything. It's just I fell asleep and it was like instant dream world, I guess. Oh, okay. You know, and I... I saw my girlfriend in this uh, kitchen, and she was sitting actually right there, and she did, Bang. and I don't know what happened, and then I saw some other stuff, and it's, I do a lot of meditation, I get stuff like that too, but this was mm. like a direct line to a really potent one, okay. a potent vision, or a potent whatever, and then, you know, I came out of it, and then I really had to pee, Okay. And then we pretty much ended there, and it was it was only like an hour process, but it, it really felt a good. Uh, the breathing supposed to be really healing, right? And I got a lot of pain and stuff, so I really wanted to, you know, just try to move energy around, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, I really felt a strong connection with myself and with John at the time. Like, um, I really felt like I was my higher self and my inner self were connected. My yeah. soul, my inner child, whatever you want to say, right? I'm not going to let language barriers confuse me of how I felt and, and what was going on for me. But it was quite fun. That's cool. And I, um, I, I'm i definitely going to do it again. Cool. And Can you describe the, the breathing at all? Like what? I don't really want to spoil much of it, but it was just pretty much consistent deep breathing. Okay. Right? Like, all it's right, it's cool. not my practice to teach. Okay. If that makes sense. I just want, I just want to like but get an it, idea of what it's like. Yeah, like breath work, like breath, really deep, okay. deep breathing stuff. Um, but I, I didn't, I didn't think it'd be so nifty like that. And I've, I've heard people talk about it before, and um, it just worked really effectively in a short period of time for me. And I'm sure if I did it for longer periods or went on a retreat like John did, mm -hmm. you could probably get get through a lot of stuff if not it's probably extremely healthy for your body so yeah it's pretty neat well i've meditated with john before too mm -hmm. um and yeah no i felt that especially after and he would we would meditate for like longer than i had was used to i was used yeah. to transcendental which is two 20 minute hits a day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh he was like well no try we'll sit here and try an hour yeah, yeah. and uh after that yeah no i felt I felt very calm, you know, and uh, the meditation kind of just gives me a sense of my anxiety uh -huh. and uh, how it, the neurosis, mm. how it, how it affects my thought. Like it's, it's the feelings in my body uh -huh. that kind of affect my thoughts, right? Totally. So. Um, yeah, just a little footnote there. Um, I've seen a lot of Zen information on the youtube and they're like oh yeah go home and do 10 20 minutes meditation some some pretty established zen teachers only meditate for 30 minutes a day but i definitely oh. find 30 plus minutes and let's say an hour is definitely the leap off zone where if you're meditating in stillness mm -hmm. time loses its gravity so sometimes it can be really quick or it can be insanely long feeling. Yeah. It could be yeah. like eternity. 
and, and your brain stops remembering what casual time is and it starts it maybe dilating it or something it really you lose sense of time for totally. sure i've opened my mind or my eyes and been like what five minutes no way yeah <laughs> right? yeah exactly and, and then i've been like wow i crushed an hour and mm -hmm. a lot of times i've meditated in an hour and i've thought to my mind i've been like it has been an hour, and my, I open my eyes, and my alarm's been going off. Yeah, yeah, I've that's had pretty, that before. That's pretty trippy. Yeah. That's pretty trippy. That's trippy. Um, no, it's interesting, because um, I find with, with long meditations, mm. I'll find myself, like, a, like 60 to 70% of that time, I'm just thinking, and I'm yeah. not really thinking sure. about the technique. And I was always told, you know, you, don't, you never force the technique. You don't like yell at yourself. You don't, oh, pay attention, right? That that's that's nah. counterproductive. So, yeah, no, it, and but I find the longer time I have, the more time I will just kind of slack off. And it's also sure. interesting too. Is lately the first five to ten minutes, I I almost have a warm up meditation because it's the first time I probably sat in stillness all day. And then yeah. I remember all these things I need to do, yeah. things I need to do, yeah. do, yeah. do, yeah. do, yeah. do. Yeah. right? That I'm not, I'm not distracting myself with the phone, the TV, mm -hmm. what, like talking to people, whatever, yeah. right? So I, I need that time to go write down stuff that's like I need to do, oh, neat. you know, like that I've been putting off or forgetting. So. I've definitely had, especially with busy days where I'll sit down and meditate and I've probably been sitting for 15 minutes and then I've been like, oh yeah, I should be meditating. Not yeah. thinking of bullshit. Right? Yeah. And, and that's cool. It's, it's, it's a way of maybe like, you know, like just melting in, right? There's, Is that the pro, but that's part of the process too, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I, I find the bullshit. Yeah. But I find but... like sometimes when I first sit down, there's big skips. Yeah. And like normally if I'm paying attention, if I go on a skip, who cares? Yeah. And I just back to focus, whatever. I don't, like I said, don't yell at myself. But if I mm. catch myself, I'll be like, actually, we're meditating. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's it. And then I'll either watch my breath or ask, what am I? Simple things that I don't think um, cause any trouble with nothing. Except mm. help me relax and um, help me see the world differently and better, I would say. So, which what leads us to the next thing. Mm. You know, Herb, that's a very Virgo thing to say. Mm -hmm. right? We got astrology here. So, what's interesting too is mm -hmm. you and I are very like opposite mm -hmm. kind of signs. You're Virgo the fire, right? No, Earth. 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 You're Earth. Earth. Oh, okay. All right. Supposedly, so maybe we're supposedly. not. Supposedly, I could be wrong, but is it? You've told me I was Earth, and someone else is it. Well, I tried to. Yeah. So anyway, I'm a Pisces, mm -hmm. and so what do you know about your Virgo-ness? I don't know much, but no. I do know, I was reading, the only thing I know, I was reading that um, Virgo is the start of the astrology thingy, and then it ends on Leo. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like birth, Christianity, birth, virgin, and then it ends on the Leo lion. That's what I've read before. Oh. Thank you. Some drops in my beard, have we? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good for wear. It's probably good for good. the hair. It's good, it's for, good the for the hair. hair. Right? But it, it goes to what we were talking about earlier. Tea sippers. If tea sippers walked by me and seen poor yeah, my beard, they'd be like, they, they'd me. be like this legend. Yeah, they would. <laughs> so it's the start, eh? Because I've, I've yeah. heard Aries is the start oh. and Pisces is the end. That could be true. Yeah. I was I was in but, a, I was in a rabbit hole of like, um, oh, because it was like the signs or something, and Virgo points to Leo or I don't know some mm -hmm. weird stuff. I don't know much about it. You know, comment on the comments and tell us what we need to know about yeah. this. He's the he's the professional. Uh, I, and well, he's lost. I, I I get into it. I'm no way a professional. I, mm -hmm. I I just like reading about myself. Ah. So I think, <laughs> I think that's why I got into it. Um, but mm -hmm. I know for me, the Pisces is the water. They're not very, you know, it's, it's generally not a leadership sign. Mm. It's not a, it's a very emotional so sign. Mm -hmm. So other signs are kind of more logic mm. driven where Pisces are intuitively emotional driven. Um, yeah, no, I, I hear yeah. that. I, uh, 
I just remembered now. So, so I have a little bit of that Virgo ness, and you've seen some of my Virgo ness. Mm -hmm. But I also in um, Avrideric medicine. I'm a Pitta. So Ayurvedic. I, yeah. So mm -hmm. I am really oily, and I'm really fiery with that. And I, I've read a bunch of descriptions of that, and like that's me to a T. Especially the diet, like the things they say I'm not supposed to eat. I can't eat. They either really? my stomach hurt or my teeth hurt. Huh. And then mm -hmm. I've I also dialed my birthday to my numerology and things and um that lines up with my personality too oh, so cool. i think i'm probably probably pretty bright on all three of them mm -hmm. so i glow in all three and that makes this type of weird right here yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool mm -hmm. Or the, do the psychoses is the kicking psychoses, in, and the yeah. neuroses is kicking the neuroses, in. well the neuroses is constant <laughs> it's just a constant burn um, nice, nice. Getting a little excited. This is good tea. Last That's lap. Good tea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> it's an ICP. Oh yeah. Remember the great well, Malenko? We talked about not great talking about Malenko. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was a, that, was, that was the first ICP song I heard, and the first time I heard it, I was on acid. Don't oh, don't do that. That sounds fun. Don't no one else that sounds do that. Fun. Everything went <laughs> everything went pink and creepy. <laughs> I don't know why. Gathering of the juggalos one day. Mm, well, no. you want to be in the bushes with I'll binoculars. watch you from a distance. You watch for yeah. Right. <laughs> uh oh, we got the Avatar movie. Yeah, we got the Avatar movie. Um how much time do we got left here? Five. Oh yeah, we got, we got five uh, James Cameron changed the world. <coughs> well, okay. Do you remember when it came out? Oh yeah. Did you see it in theater? Oh yeah, I, I saw, saw it three times. I saw it three times in theater. Well, there too. you go. Change there you the go. World. Yeah. Um, I come from you know I was born in the eighties, and it sucked. I, I was born in this time where like I heard that three D movies existed. But since they weren't in the theaters no more and they didn't translate to VHS, like I didn't get 3D movies and right. I was a big horror movie fan and, you know, like Friday the 13th 3 was in 3D. Right. But I didn't get that and that bugged me. So when Avatar came out, blew my mind. The 3D was epic. The colors were epic. I'm an artist by nature and a bit of a trippy hippie. So like I got lost in that. Mm -hmm. And actually, at the same time, I bumped into some friends that I've never done, but they've done some DMT. And they were into it at the time. And right. They were like, "You do DMT, and it's Avatar. The guy does the Avatar and the DMT." And I don't know. I have heard that people see lots of entities on that sort of drug, and oh, I can okay. see the combination. I don't know. I just like three D movies. It's it's funny because like the three D I think you were talking about beforehand were. Mm. The red and blue Ooh, glasses, right? That was good. And do you remember, like, I remember there were, like, comics and things that came with these glasses. And you would, but it Dinosaur books. Dinos, dinosaur. Did you, did you have those fucking dinosaur books? I had those dinosaur books. Oh, they did were you? so good. Yeah. Oh, my God. Velociraptor. Mm -hmm. Love the Velociraptor. I'm putting a bookmark in here because I don't know if I've seen it with you yet. I have Friday the 13th Part 3 on DVD and... The people who redid a box set found the 3D film that was on the reel that was uh, in the theaters, and they redid it, and I have 3D glasses in. If you ever want to watch red and green 3D, Friday the 13th, whoa. come on down to my plasma <laughs> screen downstairs, and we'll get That's with sweet. it. That's sweet. That's cool. Um, Very good. But yeah, the 3D dinosaur. And you're all invited, too. Except you. you oh, what's wrong with Jim? Ah, I was looking at Paul behind oh, him. Oh, Paul. Oh, no, no one, one Paul. likes Paul. Paul. Tighten up. Get out of here. Um, yeah. <laughs> but there were those books. And I don't know. They were always, like, I was a kid. I'd always, like, break the glasses because they're, they're, like, paper and stuff. Chew on them. And then Avatar came out. Mm. They gave you, like, sunglasses, mm. glasses. Um, and then I remember like all the movies were doing it because they wanted to cash in on Super the Avatar. Super expensive glasses too. Were they? I thought they gave them for, for free. I, I thought I remember like the whole... Se no, no, no. You get the normal ones for free. But if you bought the Stormtrooper ones, they were like 20 oh, bucks. Oh, okay. 22 yeah. Canadian Stormtrooper yeah. glasses. Okay. Things like that. Or well, something get, like that. They got upselled, yeah. Upselled. They upsell you. Um, and then all the movies had the 3D glasses. 
Yeah. And then now, and like now it's gone away, pretty much. Or, or is there real? Is there? They call it like real D or something. I don't know, but I, I just don't. I mean, there's no freaking movies in theaters anymore. There probably isn't going to be anymore, right? Yeah. Movies gonna be on. Well, they'll come back. I missed a movie last Halloween. They're playing um, Nightmare on Elm Street in the theater before they closed them down, and I missed it. Oh. That's, and that's your fave. It's my One fave, and I never seen that in the theater, so that would have been cool. That would have been cool. I did watch Empire Strikes Back at Silver City. In 3D? No, just no, because it's Empire Strikes oh, Back. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the best Star Wars movie. Yeah, pretty sick. Probably the, pretty sick. Yeah. the the pinnacle. And you know, it was a little social distance in there, so people were like a couple meters that way, a couple meters that way, so mm. it's pretty awesome. I liked it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll be right back. Yeah, same bat channel. Hey, Matt. Hey. Hey. We're back. Yeah. What were we talking about? Um. James um, Cameron, Avatar. Yeah. Three Dizzle. Yeah, it was good. I can't wait for the new ones. Um, let's, let's go to the next, the next, uh, Spacey. Oh. We were just talking about this when we were setting up the camera again. Star Trek. Yes, Star Trek. Star Trek. I have never been a Trekkie. I was more of a Wars, you know, lightsabers, mm. blasters. <laughs> right? But I'm comfortable today. I'm comfortable with who I am. Mm -hmm. And... I want my nerd flag to fly. So I've been giving Star Trek a chance. Next generation. Give Trek the, a chance. The original Star Trek. Now, I've, I've dabbled with the original Star Trek a bunch. but And I saw a few episodes of Next Gen when it came out. But it's freaking hilarious. I've been watching the first few episodes of Generation with that Captain Picard. And that is some funny-ass television. It's pretty good. I freaking like it. And, and you know, it, it pulls me right in. Mm -hmm. You know? Um... But you have some experience with this. I, I'm a big Star Trek fan. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, big. I didn't know this about him until recently. Pretty big. Well, it's something, you know, it's not something you just announce mm -hmm. to everyone because there's judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, we still have, it's, we all still have an understanding. Point now, we're all wear the I was considering getting a poster mm. of Captain McCarthy. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Wild. Um... <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I'm into it. I've watched, uh, I watched them all except Deep Space Nine uh, and some of the new ones. Mm -hmm. But I love Next Generation and I love Voyager. Mm. They're kind of my hit. I'm not a big fan of the original. Mm. It's just a little too campy and. I think you have to do like. A large amount. Well, now back in the day, it might have been good, but I think now you have to have been into psychedelics for a while to really be into the original Star Trek. It is, it is trippy and weird, and you just have to have a bit of a broken mind for it. Um, I don't like the pacing of it. Yeah, I mean anything. The whole thing's strange. Anything kind of like, like '90s and up. Yeah. The pacing of movies has totally changed, okay. and I definitely have that like millennial brain. Yeah. That needs everything fast, 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 fast. Yeah. Quick, quick, quick cuts. Mm. You know, all these things. Next Generation, uh, some of the later seasons, they totally get away from a lot of the, uh, the like, old, original Star Trek, right? Like, sure. the, what you're watching right now, mm. is what I notice, is very reminiscent of the original. The, yeah, and I'm talking about the first season of Next Generation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because cool. they, they're they're drawing upon it, right? And oh, That's okay. he ain't laughing no more. Eh. Um, so, so yeah, I, when I watched it, I was told to avoid you know the first seasons. I'm like, <clears throat> oh yeah, you know they're kind of doing the same thing. It's very kind of slower paced, <laughs> but you get into this the third to like final seasons. It's all like kind of they kind of got their shit together. The writing. And everything like that so i i enjoy those episodes yeah a lot more no so. i i hear what you're saying i um for one never thought i'd be having converse a serious conversation about star trek with anyone ever mm -hmm. um but it's good mm -hmm. and um 
I, I'm liking all those episodes. And so I'm watching the original Star Trek from the beginning, Next Generation from the beginning, and Deep Space Nine from the beginning, all at once. So I'm like picking, going back and forth, and uh, yeah. I'm going to say the first two Star Wars are, or Star Trek are easier to get into than Deep Space Nine, right now at least. You got to be like really ha, ha, to like yeah. the Deep Space Nine, but it's still flowing for me. Um, I like it. I like the I like the conversations they have. I like when they talk mm -hmm. about split neuron theory and the yeah. quantum mechanics and the wormhole things. These are things I Google and YouTube all the time and read about. Like this is the stuff I like to know. So now now there's a show pertaining to that sort of information. So mm -hmm. I think it's hel helping my open mind get a little bit more open. And it's given me um, something to crush. You know? Yeah. There's 177 freaking episodes of like Tons. each. Tons of 80 of the original and 177 of both Deep Space Nine and Next Gen. Like, oh, wow. like if you like sitting down and crushing things, like that's that's the way to do it. Like, yeah. I, I want my ass to callous. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've been wanting to say that for a while. Yeah. 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 No, it's true. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. And I mean, all the. Yeah. I mean, it's got. That's what it's got. It's got strong characters. It's got um, interesting Who's your favorite lines. character? Generation. Next. Next generation? Oh, Worf. Worf. See, Worf. I want to say Worf, too. Yeah. I, Date is pretty cool, too. And Worf's a very one-dimensional character. Yeah. Worf's he's, like, Worf. He's very... But I really like his Klingon Civil War kind of storyline. Mm. That's dope. Like, he, he gets his honor taken away from him, and then he's mm. getting back to his honor. Like, Klingons are like space Vikings. Yeah. Basically, right? So... I don't know. I just I really like the Klingons. They're gross. They're crazy. They're mm. angry. I remember back in the day yeah. again. I seen a couple episodes, and I think I remember one where like Worf's beefing with his weird sword, and I can't the wait till that happens. Can't wait till that it's happens. Yeah. I know. I've seen a few of the old school movies, and they're freaking fantastic too. And I'm gonna rewatch mm. them. I got a friend putting them on a drive, and I'm oh, gonna be nice. watching them soon. Nice. Um, I did also watch those newer Star Trek movies, and they're pretty good, too. I don't think I've seen the third oh, one. Oh, those are good. Cool. Yeah. But the first two were great. With Chris Pine and... Uh, I don't know who was in it, but they were great. The new one? Yeah, no, they're they're interesting. Yeah. They reminded me of, like, a Thor mm -hmm. type of movie. They were like... They're fun. Yeah. yeah. Engage. It's fun. Okay, we, um, got a, we got a couple more. What do we got here? What do we got here? Oh, you want to keep moving on? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay, something. you were We were talking about... Milk propaganda, mm -hmm. um, and the pseudoscience around milk drinking. Yeah, so I have vegan friends, and I've become vegan from time to time. Not at the moment, um, and uh, you know they. I, I've come to be aware that they hide ingredients and things. They stuff milk in, or milk powder, or protein powder, or butter, lard, and mm -hmm. almost everything, and. Uh, some things came to my attention, like uh, milk propaganda. I, I sat in a herbal schools class to see if I wanted to go to the herbal school, and I came right in on the milk propaganda day, which is hilarious because I already rant and rave about the milk propaganda. But supposedly, um, the U.S. government are supposed to buy a lauded amount of dairy a year. They've made agreements back in the day to do that for some sort of taxes thing. So there's ample surplus of dairy being produced every year and it stacks up this is the right. theory supposedly in silos under the ground and um i think it's in the 80s if i remember correctly but there was one point where on the national food guide of what you're supposed to eat milk infiltrated three of the food groups mm. they have their dairy let's talk about what milk is milk milk or dairy is fat cholesterol and protein it has protein but it's not it's not like an abundant source not anything more than a bean or something um <clears throat> but it's there it's there but well, it's, what about it's, two percent milk like that's that's fat the two percent right. is the amount of fat that's in it okay but okay okay yeah and so it, it it comes down to calling a source of protein a food group when hmm. you know if you look at fruits and vegetables there's just a bazillion vitamins proteins carbs right. all going through it you look at grains, it's kind of the same thing. Minerals, vitamins, carbs, proteins, right? And right. anyways, all I know is at one point they were like, okay, so you got your dairy. And if you don't eat meat, 
You can have cheese sandwiches as a meat substitute along mm. with your peanut butter, let's say. So that'd be your meat substitute. So now the so now the, the cheese and maybe like a protein shake would be in your meat section okay. under the food guide back in the day as like infiltrated. And then and then it was even infiltrated onto the 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 whole grain section because they were like, Oh yeah, you might as well butter your toast. Oh, so so okay, at one yeah. point Milk hit three of the food groups, which is kind of tricky. And um, so, was there were people eat people were at one point eating toast without butter on it? No, I don't just know plain about like I have no idea bread? about that. I don't know about because I couldn't if I no, that'd be, know, man, that'd be gross. Maybe if you dipped it in stew, but it's still better with butter yeah. than stew. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. What, what I'm trying to say is like the power of suggestion, okay. right? So, you, you give a whole bunch of kids and kindergarten up these little maps of how to eat i remember i got one of those yeah of course sure, right yeah. um interesting then there's all the slogans like got milk and all these things and mm -hmm. it was back in the day to build strong bones and da 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 stop osteoporosis yeah, and that's right. i'm pretty sure there's other things that help all that that's right? so, so funny because it's, it's just strange it's big business it's big business and we thought it was big health i was watching tom green before mm. i came here the tom green show from the 90s Shout out to Tom. Tom Green. The greenest Hilarious. of Toms. Um, I still find it funny, as, as I did in grade six when I first saw it. Um, well, you're from his neck of the woods. He's from Ottawa, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. patriotism. He's pretty close to you. He's pretty, pretty close. close. I Yeah, I, I don't know. I, maybe it's nostalgia, but hmm. it's funny that you, you mentioned the osteo because he, the episode I was watching, he shadows this, like, legitimate news reporter who's doing a story on the got on the milk mustache campaign, right? Yeah. And it's milk propaganda, right? Yeah. Or you know, it's like, why are you doing a story on a milk mustache? Anyways, Tom Green, he he tapes his face up. He looks like a burn victim, and he and he goes on and just starts screaming and and he's screaming, osteoporosis is awesome <laughs> in the background, and she's trying to talk, she can't hear it, totally ruins wow. it. So. Yeah, I remember That's watching funny. him as, as a pissed off teen and he helped me be pissed off and weird. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll have to revisit that stuff. I'm He's pretty good. ignorant. But, yeah. like, like yeah. you know, take it with a, a whole bunch of salt. Totally. Right? Kind of totally. like the uh, the Borat and the, the Bruno and the Ali G show. They're, they're, they're I think similar. he started all that. He started, yeah. you know, it, it was him and then Jackass. Mm. And then Borat took it to another level, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, and what's interesting too is you watch the old Tom Green show. Yeah. And the clothes he's wearing, like every teenager wears right now. Like he's got the perfect nineties old school vans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, got yeah, the, yeah. the pants, the ja like the jacket they're all I'm like, geez, he's trend center. Trendy well, yeah, mm. exactly. So hmm. that's interesting. Um Oh, so hmm. you might have another pet. Mm -hmm. Coming in your life, I um I'm in the market for a dog, and I right. have a dog. For my a do butt. Is it a dog? It's 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 it's, it's it? similar to a dog. <laughs> I I will I will show I will show everyone a picture of my dog, a Chinese crested Chihuahua. I might come in contact with owning this dog eventually. I'm saving the money. Yeah. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. Um, furless dog. Hypoallergenic. Right. Shouldn't bark too much. Going to be the weight category allowed in my housing. That's the main thing. And, um, you know, every ugly dog needs a loving home. That's true. I, it was just interesting because when you first showed me that picture, I'm like, oh, this that's some kind of blind mole rat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on her screen. What is yeah, that? Yeah. And then you look closer and, and he's got wrinkles and like moles and stuff mm -hmm. and it's like he looks like a 90 year old old man yeah dog there is so there is 10 species of furless dog okay. and um the chinese crested aren't for the faint of heart for dog owners but the people who like them really like them okay why and why I, do you like this dog i i think that i think they're clean and neat and, okay and 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 what i've read about them and the ones i've met are like really nice like like the nicest chihuahua ever type of feel with them. And I just want a nice right. little dog to have tea with me. Well, just a tea dog. Okay. A tea dog. A tea dog. Yeah. 
And, okay. and you know, like, I'm also all about enlightening my friends and family members. So maybe this dog without fur will help open the minds of my friends and, and associates. Maybe, maybe, maybe he could be famous like Kermit one day. Do you know Kermit? Kermit the Frog? No, Kermit, Kermit the Dog. You gotta Google Kermit the Dog. He's famous. Okay. So maybe this dog, I'll, I'll make him famous. Infamous. Well, anything can happen. Yeah, well, uh, he doesn't have any fur. He doesn't have... Okay. I'll have to get heated blankets, I think. Right. Things of that nature. Okay. So it's more lizard-like. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. I think you're pretty close with the mole thing. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, supposedly... Well, so, I'm sure he's going to be a great dog. Yeah, supposedly sure they he... were bred for the invalid. So they're like... Bred for the invalid. Yeah, they were bred for like... Well, I've heard they were ratters on Chinese boats. Oh, okay. But also bred for invalid people because they, they... I guess the word couch potato would probably fit these guys. They like to just sit, sit oh, okay. on their lap. They're a they're lap dog. Super lap dog. Like they don't oh, okay. even need much exercise. All these things that make it interesting. Right. So I'm hoping he could just sit in a little thing here, you know, and you know go for little jogs with me. And we um, could put we could put a little bed right here. And he, yeah, yeah, little jogs with me, you know. Um, it'll be good. My my boy hasn't had a mammal as a pet ever, right. so it'd be nice for him to learn the gentleness of a puppy and stuff. And yeah, that's good techniques for when he gets older, right? And totally. uh, yeah, you know, someone's got to do it. And I think it'll be me. Think My ridiculousness might have to be ridiculous with a dog without go. hair. Or maybe a little bit. Maybe like five hairs. Ten. Yeah, he, well, he's, he looks kind of like Homer Simpson. He's yeah, got like two. Few. Yeah. I'm hoping that specific dog I'm like on the list for, and like I've been chosen. Ooh. And uh, I really hope that hair gets long enough that I can do something with it, like a braid. Yeah. Or like a, Are you gonna dye it, give it a mohawk? Well it's already orange. I don't think I'll need to dye it. Oh, maybe true. like maybe maybe like <clears throat> maybe a mohawk, maybe. Mm-hmm. And then just comb it aside. Comb oh a top comb, a comb over, over. Like, <laughs> like like a really thin like trump. A, a raider <laughs> from uh Fallout. The Fallout I video I, game. I, I would have to eat They, they all have that kind of side mohawk. Mm. Um but you also mentioned something interesting too that there's an ugly dog award. There is an ugly dog. And award. this dog, this breed, has won it what? Like you said, I think most? it was in the teens. I think it. I think it's won it a lot of times, which is oh. kind of harsh. But um, I, I've seen pictures of the ones that have won this award, and they're like the Chinese crested. Then has like a deformity a little bit, and then right. I guess they're loved a lot, taken care of a lot, and then eventually put in these shows, and they're like proud of these. I don't ugly know. Dog. I don't know. I'm not surprised there's that, but it's it's interesting. And and Google. And I don't think it's ugly. I think it's really neat. And I've seen the pictures, but meeting the mother in real life, it's actually surreal. Like meeting a furless dog in real life, there's a little extra to it. Like you can almost their skin almost looks like almost. Uh, it's 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 a trip. That's cool. Trust me, it's a trip. Hmm. Well, we've talked. And we've teed. We've teed and talked. So. I had a lot of fun. And I hope you did too. Please join us again when we ever post or. Um, we're we're going to try to get them out weekly. Weekly? We, yeah. We're going to post them weekly maybe. And on the YouTubes and through other social medias. Sure. I'm pretty sure you could subscribe or like. Yeah. You know? We haven't had many views yet. but I think it's mostly coming. been us. I've either, I watched it. We like yeah. It. I think most of our views are just us. Have you watched so us drinking tea while drinking tea yet? No, but I should try that. Watching us while drinking tea. tea while drinking tea is a really good thing. Yeah, and we could even film us watching it, drinking tea, and then oh, we could watch that. Like a tunnel of tea. Drink yeah, I'd be things. like you know those mirrors that are side by side. Yeah, we could just do straight tea. I like this idea. We should do, be a good gimmick. Bye. Peace.